All right. Yeah, it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Okay, got it. How do you get killed for that? Okay. It's a It's a it's just. So I'm going to get a picture of me here. Ready? Hold up three fingers. Hold up three fingers up here. Should I go like this? Ready? Three. Do three. Oh, I'll just wait. We're going to do that. It's less. I'm going to do that. This fire got killed. Oh, man. All right, friends. Just, just go see it. Close up your conversation. This morning, Jared's going to present to you. I called him several years ago. He's working on a senior project now. So if you would give him your undivided attention, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm Jared Sedgwick, and I'm here for my senior project. And I did it all on social media and how to safely use it. In today's agenda, we're going to be talking about a survey that you guys are going to take. Make sure you don't put your names on it because we don't want to be hold responsibility for that. And I'm going to have a lesson on what social media is and how to safely use it. We're going to define social media. We're going to have some safety protocols for safe use. We're going to talk about some good habits for safe use. And we're going to have some final safety tips. And then, to end it, we're going to have a group activity and a class discussion. Who and why am I here? I'm Jared Sedgwick. I used to go here, of course. I played football and lacrosse. And I'm currently a senior at Laney High School. And I'm here because of my senior project. And all you guys will have to do it, trust me. I know they keep saying that they're going to take it away. And those are some. Those are some embarrassing pictures I found me on the internet by just typing in my name. All right, here's your guys' survey questions. But first, here's actually handouts of the PowerPoint, just in case you guys want to get a closer look. All All right, here's the survey questions. Let me help you. Back. Make sure you guys don't put your name on it. If you have any questions, just ask me.
don't. give you the official definition of social media and the definition is the social interaction amongst people in which they create, share, or exchange information, ideas, pictures, or videos in a virtual way or on the internet. I'm going to talk about what social media is to adults and to you. Most adults use computers in their job, but some like to use them as home, at home as well. And social media for adults often includes Facebook, LinkedIn, which is a business type of Facebook, where people that are like executives or CEOs of companies like to communicate with each other on it. And Pinterest, which is a website of displaying home projects, and they may even blog about what they're doing as like a type of diary online and your parents 
also text on their cell phones. Like my dad, he had a flip phone last year, but and he didn't text on it at all. And then he got an iPhone, and he immediately started texting all the time. When I mean all the time, I mean all the time. <laughs> Uh, he has a Facebook and a LinkedIn profile, so that's just an example of adults using it. Do any of you guys, parents, use social media? What do, What does your parents use it for? Really? Do they ever check up on you, on your social media? What do your parents use? Facebook and Twitter. Do they check up on you? Yeah. On, do you use social media as well? Mm -hmm. Nice. Do your parents check up on you on it? Uh, really? Um, Facebook and Instagram. Do your parents look at you on it? They don't monitor to you at all? My mom uses Facebook. Really? Yeah. Um, some parents do not use social media unless they're checking up on their child. And my mom doesn't have a social media website or a profile at all. And she doesn't have a Facebook page or an iPhone. But she does use the computer all the time for her work purposes. She works with the government. So she has to go through all kind of crazy protocols to even log into her computer. Hey, and in my defense, I spend all day on the computer. So the last thing I think is fun at night is being on the computer. So, I mean. I do know what it is and how to use it, but I choose not to. And there might, I mean, so if your parents aren't active on social media, it might be because they spend all day on, at work. I'm sure Mr. Marshall, after being here all day on the computer, doesn't go home and blog all night. So. She doesn't find it fun. Okay, what is social media again? Now, there's types of social media you may use completely different from your parents. You like to surf the web on, at school or for fun, or search the web for school. And you probably watch YouTube videos, and you guys like to go on YouTube, watch videos? Yeah? And I know you guys like to message your friends on Twitter, or Facebook, or Instagram, whatever you guys do. And if you like to see something cool, you post about it. And there's also trends that go on social media as well. Like, did you guys hear the ALS bucket challenge? Yeah. You heard about that? Yeah. It went viral on Facebook and Twitter, and it raised a hundred million dollars in two months, which was a three thousand percent increase from last year. And you guys like to tweet, post photos on Instagram or Twitter, have funny conversations on Snapchat. Did you guys use Snapchat? Yeah, yeah. And post videos on Vine. Then you guys use Vine. Yeah. You really popular. Jared, the one that doesn't get monitored is the most socially active one, too. She, she was yes on everything. Yeah, it's so this one, too. I mean, it, it was really popular two years ago, but some people still use it. And do any you guys know any other types of social media? Any other social media websites that you use? I use Tumblr. Tumblr? Yeah, that's a big one for girls. Any of you guys use it? No. No. Yeah, I think that's, that's more of a high school thing. Whenever you guys get older, you might get a profile on it, but it's mainly for girls. And what's your favorite website? Anyone? Favorite social media? Instagram. Instagram? What's yours? Facebook? Instagram. Instagram? Vaughn? Yeah, Vaughn's cool. Snapchat? Yeah, Snapchat. Some bad things that can happen to you on social media. And my project was on the positive effects, so I gotta have a counter argument. But the bad effects get way more attention. Here's some of the obvious bad things that can happen to you if you aren't careful using social media. If you do not protect your computer or phone in a physical way by locking it or installing a password on it, then it can get stolen, but it can get stolen anyways, and people can go on your social media profile. 
So that's a physical effect. And my brother had a brand new phone and he got it stolen from his car. The car wasn't locked and it cost him a couple hundred dollars to get it replaced. But luckily he had a PIN number on his phone, like a passcode, so the people that stole it couldn't use it. So there was really no reason to take it. And Actually, um, someone stole my like iPod like a long time ago. I had a password on it, but they can easily hack into it. And, like, really? How do they do that? I don't know. My mom did my phone works. I think you gotta like plug it to the computer and like mess with it or something. But if you guys aren't careful who you friend online and you allow to follow you or who you follow, you can be a victim of cyberbullying and it can be intimidating or threatening messages sent to you by someone you know or don't know. I am going to assume that I don't have to lecture you on something about tormenting or harassing others online because you look like good kids to me. You can also receive explicit messages or pictures electronically. This is something called sexting. And boys are more likely to send illicit text and explicit messages, but girls are more likely to send explicit photos. And sexting is extremely dangerous since texts or photos involving kids under 18 is against the law and is considered child pornography. You can go to jail for a long time. So don't do that. Here's some bad things involving social media that you may not thought about, but some of these things that can happen to adults more than kids, but it can also happen to you as well. If you don't protect your passwords or PIN numbers, you can get your identity stolen. People can research the demographics about your profile. With demographics is just things like age, gender, how much income you make, things like that, date of birth and people can get a hold of this information and somehow use it against you to steal your identity. And they can look at your personal information that you don't want anyone to see, just like that. And they can see all your posts that you've seen. And your private thoughts or private pictures could possibly ruin your reputation or the reputation of others on the World Wide Web. And remember, nothing is really deleted from uh, social media once you post it, because there's something called the cloud. And once it goes up there, there's no coming back. You guys know what the cloud is? No. It's like, it's kind of hard to explain it. It's just like the cloud for the actual World Wide Web, it's just once it, I don't, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's just so things can't get deleted, really. There's always like a trace of that information. Yeah, something like that. I'm not really sure how to explain it. And again, I typed in my name on uh, Google, and that's what came up. And it was a picture of me whenever I was in like the fifth grade. Pretty embarrassing. <laughs> And once it's posted, it's always posted. If you Google my name and look at that, that's six years ago, seven years ago. How do you prevent bad things from happening to, happening to you on social media? It's simple. I'm a big promoter of all the good things that social media can be used for. And I think so it's very simple. All you have to do is implement some safety protocols and use good online habits. Protocols are just fancy names for rules. And these are good rules. Rules and good habits work for you and your parents. Feel free to share your this with your parents so they know that they can trust you online. Did any of you guys have to use any rules when going on social media? Like how long you can be on it for. So, no. first thing you need to do is be safe and to use these rules whenever you create a social media account. And afterwards, when you use them, the site asks you for information like your name, address, or date of birth. 
and most likely ask you for some security questions like your mother's middle name or your first dog or what your high school mascot's name is. You want to make sure that you remember these so if your password does get hacked that you can answer these and potentially get it back. And make sure you use your account safely and you need to limit the amount of personal information that you put into your profiles and fill in the only required information that you're supposed to. And make sure you select a strong password so it's not easily hacked. And make sure you change your passwords or passwords on your actual iPhone often because people can people often use one password for everything and they can just figure out what that is and then they can hack everything that you have. And make sure you use lowercase and uppercase letters in it and numbers and maybe some special characters like the number sign or number symbol. And make sure you keep your laptop and phone secure whenever it's not in use and keep a master password or PIN number on these devices. So if you have a laptop, make sure you can't just get on it. Make sure you have either a thumb scanner, which is just for the new laptops, or just a regular password. My brother's laptop has a thumb scanner and a password in it. So if he wants to use it, he can just use his thumbprint. And if I have to use it, I have to actually get him to enter the password because he doesn't allow me to use it. And finally, don't friend anyone that you do not know. I know this is hard because um, whenever I used to be a big Facebook user, I just like to get as many friends as I could. And I had like a thousand friends at one point. I had like no idea who half of them were. And that could have been potentially bad for my reputation or profile. And have you guys heard the show Catfish on MTV? You've heard of it? Yeah, people can lie about how they look or who they are all the time on social media and then go meet with someone and it's completely different from who they said they were. See, it's easy to lie online whenever you can hide behind a computer screen and know that there's no uh, effects right away of how you lie to someone. Make sure you be smart and do not fall for this. talk about some of what you share online and what to not share online. PII is the personal identifiable information that's unique to you guys. It's your social security number. Do any of you guys know what your social security number is? Not at all, yeah. I wouldn't think you guys would know what it is. I barely know mine. And your home address, your date of birth, your age, gender, financial information of who you're employed to, but you guys don't really have jobs at this age. And one piece of information that is not maybe unique, but when you combine it all, it leads right back to you, so don't leave an online trace. Don't ever put this type of information on social media profile or just give it out to someone because it can be hacked. But I'm sure you guys already knew that. Like, don't put your address online. It's kind of one on one. But make sure you don't click on random emails or links to websites or ads on social media because then you can get a virus on your computer. And there's one, it's probably more for your parents, but shred all your documents that has any personal identifiable information on it because people can often just go in your trash and steal your identity that way. It happens more time than you think. Some good social media habits that you guys can pick up on. One of those habits are in place. Now you just need to develop good social media habits. Once again, I will tell you that privacy and security settings exist for a reason. Make sure you use them so you can control who sees your information. Like, make sure you put your profile on private so no one can just go onto your private or just or onto your profile and just surf in the web 
and can look up anything that you post. Make sure you protect your reputation online. And remember, college admission officers, look at your social media sites and job recruiters, and they just look for it if you're posting any like profanity or pictures of you doing anything like you're supposed to not like drinking alcohol or doing anything bad like that. And make sure you watch who tags pictures of you because people that tag a picture that you're in can often be something that you're not supposed to be doing and anybody can look at that as well because on Instagram they just made it so if you get tagged in any picture you can just click a button and you can look at every single picture that you're tagged in. Make sure you create a good online image for yourself so when a college admission officer looks at you, they can just be like, oh, he's a good person. And coaches also like to look at social media as well. Do any of you guys play any sports? Uh, sports. Okay. Tennis? Football. Football. Volleyball. Volleyball, yeah. Whenever you guys get into high school, I know that the coaches are going to look at your social media profile because they do that all the time. And kids often get suspended for posting about alcohol or drugs. It happens all the time over at Hogan. And these this means don't share this stuff online. And criminals have computers as well. Don't let them know that you're on vacation two weeks prior. So if you go on vacation, don't be posting all about it on social media because someone could identify that and just be like, hey, no one's at their house. And then they can go see your things. Make sure you don't let them know that, or make sure you don't let people know that you're at the mall or at a shopping center by yourself because it means you're vulnerable. Remember that, remember that from the movie, Meet the Parents? Have any of you guys seen that movie? Meet the Parents? No? Well, no one's seen it? You seen it? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. No? Well, I'm pretty sure he posted something about uh, where he was at, and then two burglars came and got him. What's the Circle of Trust? Circle of Trust? Yeah, that, that was um, Burns' big thing, the dad and meet the parents and meet, um, meet the Fockers. He had his Circle of Trust. So. You don't want anybody to come into that circle of trust unless you know them. Yeah. Make sure no one, not everyone is trustworthy, so keep in mind of what you're sharing and stuff online. If someone sends you a message or a picture that makes you uncomfortable in any way, then you should tell someone. Don't just keep that stuff to yourself and don't worry about being cool or anything else online because trust me, you're not going to look cool if you get suspended from school if you're posting about something like breaking into somewhere or something. And fights also get posted online and that's a charge if someone sees that and you can get suspended from school for 10 days or however many days you got to get suspended for that. And make sure you don't be a victim or don't be a bully online. Don't ever pick on someone online because it doesn't make you look cool. Make sure girls are actually uh, big cyber bullies because they think it makes them feel overpowering to talk about someone behind their back online because they know that someone can't do anything right away about it. And just last year in Florida, a 12 year old girl jumped to her death because another 12 and a 14 year old girl spent months taunting her online and making her feel bad, calling her names, calling her fat. People take that stuff seriously. Like They may not seem like they care, but deep down inside it really chips away at their soul. Yeah, I used to get cyber bullied sometimes and I would act like yeah, I didn't really care, but I know deep down inside I did, but no oh well. Keep antivirus and malware software up to date on your computer and don't bypass it. This is like McAfee or Norton anti antivirus 
and these are free. There are free versions available online for use, and Windows has the malicious software removal tool available as part of their operating system. But there are also free standalone software where you can buy and create use or create and use long and strong passwords. We already talked about that. Microsoft has password guidance. If you have a password in mind, Microsoft can give you uh, a synonym of it. So it's basically the same thing, it's just stronger. Maybe have a different couple numbers here and there. And make sure your passwords are at least eight characters long. The longer the better, include uppercase and lowercase letters and use a different password for every device. And if you get any weird emails or strange tweets from someone that you don't know, that you should tell someone about it and make sure you delete it. My last few safety tips that apply more to life in general than specifically on social media, don't spread gossip, bully, or hurt anyone in person or online. While you're online, remember if you want what is posted about you to be good, then don't post bad about someone else. And that should be vice versa. Bad things can happen to you online, so watch what you talk about and what you talk about. And according to a CNN study, 70% of teens hide their online behavior from their parents. And they try to they talk with their parents about your social media use and trust that you have the best interests in mind. So that basically means that kids are telling their parents that they're not doing anything bad on social media, but they usually are. Their parents have no idea about it. So how about you guys getting uh, four or five groups? Anyone? Getting groups? Groups? Can you guys get groups for me? Yeah, we were out you can get like three groups. Three or four groups. Three people. Yeah. Like three people per Right, you three, you three, 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 and they all have five. Is he dearer than me? Yes. He's Oh, really? You get a good such close up shot of that. So he was actually tagging this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a much stronger. It doesn't really matter like, how many people you guys have in your groups. <laughs> Just make sure you answer all the questions. Just take your time. It's just a basic scenario questions of what you guys think you should do best in the situations. Yeah, make sure you guys take your time on this. You guys can work together and talk about it.
I don't have social media, so I don't, I don't use any social media. And I just started using LinkedIn. LinkedIn? Yeah, I do have a LinkedIn. I don't keep it active. Yeah. Is everyone just about done? Suddenly start to get friend requests from 
people that you have no idea who they are. What do you do? Um, what do you put? Decline it. Block them. Decline and block them. Is that pretty much what everyone said? Did we get any other answers? Did someone say anything different? Nope. Yeah, that's pretty much what I do too. Maybe if you get like an excessive amount, maybe tell someone or contact someone, one of the Facebook makers, to ask them about anything suspicious like that. Number two, someone tweets nasty remarks about you and all of his followers or his followers. Suddenly, the, these laws are trending and everyone is tweeting about you. What do you do? What do you do? Deactivate your Twitter? Yeah. yeah. What did you do? Um, Tell someone about it. Would you just keep your Twitter activated and just not go on it? Mm -hmm. Is that what you guys would pretty much do? Mm -hmm. Just get off and not look at it? What did you guys do? Number just two. ignore them and don't listen. And if it gets out of control, then tell someone. So you would keep getting on Twitter? Even if they're, no. even if you just saw tweets about it? No? You just wouldn't go on it? Yeah, that's pretty much what I do too. I would most likely deactivate my account because if I just saw tweets about me that were bad, then there's no point of being on social media. Number three. You make an email account on Google Mail to send fake love letters to one of the players on your team. You think it's funny, but you notice that the kid quits coming to school. What should you do? Um, what did you put? Um, I put apologize to the kid and tell him to stop hurting. Would you contact an adult? Or would you just try to call the person? Okay. That's a good answer. What did you put? Number three. Okay. Is that what you guys would just say? Just sorry. Didn't mean to. It's a joke. Is that what you guys put? Um, number four. You get an email telling you that you've won an iPhone 6. All you have to do is give them your personal information including age, home address, and number of people in the household. And the best time to, to reach you. What do you do? Okay, that's a good answer. What would you do? you guys do? Don't listen to it and probably fake and don't give them any information. Yep, that's a smart decision. On those emails, they're all spams and it's either going to put a virus on your computer or it just leads to no good. So don't even bother clicking on it, delete the email, send it to your junk mail, whatever you got to do. Alright, number five. A friend uploads an Instagram picture of his 13 year old girlfriend in her underwear. What do you do? What you do? Definitely. Definitely. Would you guys all report them? Because that's the thing you should do. Because social media is not a place where you can be posting inappropriate pictures of that. There's no nature of that allowed on it. And it just doesn't belong on the internet for everyone to see. That's your personal information. You shouldn't post that so the public can see it. Did anyone say anything different? Then block them and report them now. Okay, number six. You're reading a classmate's blog and notice that the comments are becoming very dark and disturbing. No one else is concerned. What else should you do? What did you guys do? What would you do? Tell your parents? Yeah, tell an adult, someone older than you, what would you do? I don't know, what's happening, and so you have to help, and then you have to help. Okay.
Okay, I like that answer. Any other? I couldn't hear what she said. She said she would try to talk to the person and ask them if they're okay. What would you do, man? Yeah. Block them. All right, well, I don't think that's the best alternative. But in that situation, I would probably contact an adult first and then maybe try to message or talk to the person and ask them if they're okay. But I really liked her answer. That was a really good one. Okay. Did any of you guys have any questions or anything? No? All right, I think I'm just about done here. Thank you, guys. How do you turn this off?